Watch the breakdown. He copied my whole f***ing flow. Oh, word for shit. word, bar for bar. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Blessing and I'm a first year undergrad at UCL studying English. I'm also a pop culture enthusiast. So I kind of wanted to incorporate that on my channel a little bit more and bring a bit of critical discussion and critical discourse onto my channel. And I thought I would start with something that isn't really like hard to talk. I'm talking about bad baby especially and black fishing, cultural appropriation and things like that. Now I was a bit hesitant at first to make this video especially about bad baby because I feel like you're kind of just feeding her, feeding the monster as it were in terms of giving her what she wants and keeping her relevant by being outraged. But I didn't want to focus just on the outrage and just on what she's done. Whilst I think that's important and I definitely will refer to it in this video, I think it's also important to discuss the implications it has for black people, especially black women and black creators and black influencers, the whole phenomena of black fishing, people trying to look black essentially. And the more I kept seeing up my timeline, the more I knew it was something I wanted to bring on my channel for discussion and not just keep it on my TL. So when I say black fishing, what I mean by it is people excessively dark in their skin. So I'm not just talking about tan, I'm talking about when people excessively tan, extremely dark, use extremely dark makeup compared to their original complexion and end up looking black as a result of it. This type of black fishing, I find, isn't necessarily to mock black people, but has the role of erasing the position of black people, especially black women in society. And this black fishing, I believe, by my definition, performs two broader functions. So the first function is to allow them the ability to access black culture due to their seeming proximity to black in terms of look and then the second function is the exoticness and the racial ambiguity that allows them to benefit from colorism. The issue with these things is that you are able to profit off black culture without actually being black and that's an issue because if someone isn't black yet is able to benefit off black things and using black culture it taking away that opportunity from someone else who's actually black to benefit. So Going back to my second function, which was the whole colorism discussion, black fiction to me definitely brings on a useful debate about colorism and really shows desirability politics at work which come out of colorism. When talking about bad baby, for example, when defending people who blackfish, people often say, They're not trying to look black. She doesn't even look black. Well, when people say this, I feel like people often look at blackness in a one shade fits all kind of way and it's definitely not true blackness is so varied there's obviously some things we have in shared experiences but it's such a varied thing and you don't even have to go too far to realize that there isn't one shade of blackness and i feel like because obviously these people when they excessively tan they're never going to necessarily look like lupita for example or they're not going to look dark skin because being dark skin for them isn't profitable and going back to the whole colorism debate neither is it desirable but they will look like people like Beyonce like Rihanna like Cassie you know like Cardi B and people like that they will look like that because that's seen as desirable because their skin is lighter so that's what they want to look like they're gonna look like a certain shade of black so of course colorism is a discourse that has to be raised and it's an implication of black fishing because black fishing literally feeds off the whole colorism debate and the idea of being racially ambiguous. And a lot of people were saying she's trying to look racially ambiguous, she's not trying to look black. I need to stop you there because when you say racially ambiguous, yes, she's trying to look like she's mixed, but you have to understand that it's not just mixed with anything. She isn't trying to look Asian, for example. She's trying to look black. So she's trying to look like she's mixed with black. So when I say racially ambiguous, and when you say racially ambiguous, you need to realise that actually it isn't just to look like any other race or like you're mixed in general, but it's to look specifically mixed with black because that is the most desirable position to be in with the whole desirable kind of face and image. So now I've explained that, I kind of want to just get into the case study, which is Bad Baby. And I want to talk about what she's actually done and talk about why people see it as black vision and whether I agree with them. So Bad Baby has done a lot of things, okay? She's just known for doing a lot of terrible things. Scandals are her brand, as in, we have to remember when she became famous, she became famous for being on Dr. Phil's show, for insulting, I believe it was her mum or her guardian, some sort of um, kind of parental figure. And that's what it's her kind of being known, having some sort of clout. She's known as the catch me outside girl. So she's known 
in a very negative light she's infamous we shouldn't even say famous she's infamous if anything so thinking about these things now these black fishing and cultural appropriation claims we shouldn't be shocked because her brand basically relies on outrage and i find that outrage is especially black people's outrage outrage elsewhere from other people she may get and i think she doesn't mind but black outrage specifically is what she relies on and i'll show you how i know that based on the things that she does the first one was a video of her with significantly darker makeup on her face compared to her neck and the rest of her body with a filter that made her look darker as well and made her face look like it wasn't Daniel Bregoli, which is who she actually is when she's not being a bad baby. If anything, she looked like Cardi B to keep it 100 with you. Like literally, if I saw that and I had no idea who it was, someone said, who is that? I would say it's a Cardi B lookalike because she looked nothing like herself. And that's what blackfishing is. It's just like catfishing, but instead of trying to be someone else, you're trying to be a different race, which is black. And that wasn't the only thing she did. She also posted like a little video of herself or a photo or something of her getting ready. It was a black MUA doing her makeup, which was questionable. The makeup was significantly darker than the rest of her body. It was excessively dark. She didn't look white, like I said before. And that's what made me want to make this video because people were posting it like, what the hell, what is this? You know, people were just like, she's trying to be black. And then people were saying, no, she's not trying to be black. If she feels pretty then let her be but the issue here isn't about someone feeling pretty someone just tanning it's excessive tanning and it's the erasure of black people and black women and when i say the erasure of black women what i'm talking about is the fact that by her denying that she's trying to look black she's suggesting that she's completely invented this look that she's having and that nobody looks like that and it's a lie black women that look like that exist but for her to say that she's not trying to be black or trying to look like that she's suggesting that these black women do not exist when they do like i said by trying to feign this proximity to black culture by looking black she's trying to replace what's already there by suggesting there's no origin to it there's no beginning to it that she's kind of suggesting that she's a tabula rasa what she's doing is new and has never been done before because with the whole premise of black fishing is the fact that people are making themselves look a certain way so they can be compared to black women in order for us to compare bad baby to black women you have to have similarities and there are similarities between the way black women look and the way in which bad baby looks now and has never looked before and the issue of this whole idea of replacement and not just simply replication is that you will have brands out there who in a bid to look diverse will hire influencers who blackfish to like i said look diverse look like they're inclusive when realistically everyone they hire are white people but they just have people who can pass off as black because they excessively darken their skin and that's the issue actual black influencers are missing out on opportunities because you have people blackfish and pretending to basically be them it's something that's worth their being outraged for because it's a travesty that there are black people out there who are making content who are hitting the numbers who often have higher numbers than their white counterparts but aren't being hired because someone else darkens their skin and can be passed off as black now i'm briefly going to talk about some other things that black baby has done that kind of equate to the whole black fishing thing and the whole idea that she tries to capitalize and profit off black culture so for example she got box braids recently i think like a few weeks or months back who even knows now but fairly recently she got box braids and people were mad about it now the way i see it the whole box braid situation as a black woman and as someone who has had box braids before uses them as protective styles i do see it as cultural appropriation and the reason for that braids aren't simply a style first of all they're protective style second of all there has been a lot of negative stigma with relation to black girls having braids i remember in primary school when you know us black girls used to have braids or have like our hair in a certain kind of braid styles little designs almost and people used to call them doo-doo plaits like it was a genuine thing the fact that there were negative connotations about it people used to say those things about our braids and our protective styles i just don't think that it should be allowed for people who aren't black to now wear these styles like a trendy thing and to profit off of it because i think people forget that a lot of the time when people wear these styles they're seen as cute they're seen as trendy and the reception that they receive as someone who isn't black compared to a black person is completely different and it's a conversation that we need to have the fact that kim k was wearing fulani braids and cornrows and then 
people were saying that Fulani braids weren't actually just the black thing because Bo Derek wore it one time in a role is just completely insane to me. The fact that people can try and again, like I said before, erase our culture and erase us. And this whole idea of erasure reminds me of current talks about TikTok. Now TikTok I think is a great platform. It allows for people to be extremely creative and I love TikTok for that. However, we can't forget to talk about the fact that a lot of black creatives don't get credit for the things that they create. And I'm gonna present you with two scenarios. As a black creative, it's either you don't get credit for what you create, as we saw with Julia, her dance Renegade, Charlie D'Amelio took credit for it, and allowed herself to get clout off the Renegade dance when she never created it is terrible to me. I'm grateful that Julia eventually got to appear on the Ellen show and got her name out there, but she's one of the lucky few who are able to do that. There are people out there who've had things stolen from them. For example, the girl who made the eyebrows on fleek vine, she created, you know, a whole phrase and a whole new word, fleek. Everyone was saying on fleek, as in brows on fleek, that whole thing was her and she didn't receive a single penny from it. He had companies selling on shirts, on different items capitalizing on something that she made and that is the issue when people don't get credited for the things that they create especially black creators and it happens all the time and the thing is they'll create dances you know for fun post it online and people will take the credit for it and it's just simply not fair i don't see why it's so hard to credit people for something that they created no one is saying you can't recreate things recreation is beautiful but credit the person you got it from and then the other scenario i want to present you with is that even when people are credited for things or when people acknowledge that a black person created something the reception they receive often isn't the same as the reception a white person receive they might not receive as much attention or if they receive attention it's often negative there's hairstyles that seem to get to and match it that black people do creative things they do you know half mohican half ponytail whatever it could be and people will see it as bad and as ugly and as like who wants to do that but then if it appears on the front cover of vogue or white person essentially does it it's then seen as cool edgy everyone now wants to recreate it but what i'm trying to bring out here and highlight to you guys is that we need to have a discussion on credit and acknowledging people for things they do and ownership and rights as well as considering the reception that we give to white people versus black people and different things and this whole topic brings me on to the next thing that I want to talk about with regards to Bad Baby specifically again which is the way she acts and the way she talks. Now Bad Baby's often been said to have what people call a black scent which is that she talks kind of urban kind of gangster what I would call you know African-American vernacular English and the way in which she acts as well and the things she does people say is similar to black women and it's very important that we make a distinction when we say black women and we be very specific the way in which she acts is as a stereotypical black woman and that forces me to see bad baby not as a person but rather as a caricature in that she's what an english student would call a flat character she has no real depth to her she literally is a bad baby that's her whole image as in i can use an analogy of her literally being a baby throwing tantrums, throwing her toys at the pram as it were, and just being a nuisance essentially. And then you've got the parents who react to the tantrum. And the parents would be us, people, the public, people who talk about her. But you can either as parents ignore her, you can as parents pander to her and encourage what she's doing saying that it isn't wrong, or as parents you can say look what you're doing isn't right there's different scenarios different responses that the parents could have and that's reflective of the different responses people have in society you can either defend bad baby and say you know she's just trying to look pretty not like a black person i, I, I don't know if there's people or you can say you know what we're just going to ignore her us ignoring her isn't you know indicative of how we feel about it we can still see it as wrong maybe even see it as right we're just not going to talk about her not give her any attention and you've got people who and i think rightly so are outraged and who will respond to her and say look what you're doing isn't right you need to stop what you're doing and in that light you can kind of see bad baby in some ways as a monster that feeds on outrage and that's what she is her brand like i said is built on 
negative press and negative attention because from the time which you can insult whether it be her mother or whatever guardian figure it was on dr phil on big big national tv she can insult someone that is close to her you know blood relative of course she can insult black people because she ain't even black in the first place she doesn't care about no one as you can see she doesn't care about anyone she will do whatever it takes to get a bit of attention and some people can give her the benefit of the doubt and say she genuinely doesn't mean any harm by what she's doing but personally i don't for one second believe that she's innocent in any of this i believe that her moves are calculated and she knows exactly what she's doing and the reason i say this is because she pointed it out kylie jenner who has also been at times a black fishing offender and i've got the receipts in an interview she basically said kylie jenner would do anything for clout and i'll put the clip in here so you can see it yourself right I'm now like she wants attention so bad like little would do anything as you can see in that clip she just said that kylie jenner would do anything for a bit of attention that's exactly what bad baby would do because it's her brand it's not far-fetched to expect anything less from bad baby if bad baby was doing something right i would be shocked because that isn't her brand it's not consistent with her image her image is of a person who clearly wants to disrupt people and to cause a scene essentially and again how i know that she wants to profit off black outrage in particular is because she, whenever she addresses the outrage she receives which is from a varied audience by the way she often addresses black people specifically and i'll grab my phone for this one so i'm going to reach some responses to two incidents one of them being the one with the dark makeup with her towel i think she was wearing or something and the second one being in relation to braids with the whole excessive darkening of skin she said on her instagram story ah oh, i'm trending heart emojis you know kisses whatever thank you second thing she posted was millions of people sick thousands dying every day and y'all worried about me getting makeup done for a photo shoot i'm usually the wild one but y'all need to chill and focus on what's important right now so she isn't necessarily saying that what she's doing is right but she's saying that we've got bigger fish to fry and maybe it's true we've got bigger fish to fry but we have to recognize that what she's doing is still wrong and that people have a right to be outraged she also recently did another video on instagram live which i didn't watch so i don't care but i saw snippets on twitter which i will later talk about in this video but before that i quickly want to refer to her response to the braids incident the box braid incident and what she said so she said and i quote to all the black females that are saying my hair ain't meant for box braids guess the beep what your hair ain't meant to be straight but your glue okay i can't read this this just... basically let me just paraphrase and get to the main bits she's basically talking about people who said that her hair isn't the right kind of hair for box braids and they're making a brilliant point most people who are white their hair is normally quite thin and will not be able to withstand box braids because box braids are protective style for people who have thick hair which tend to be most black people or even if it's not thick it can withstand the heaviness of box braids and black people tend to get it as a protective style to protect their natural hair white people don't need to get box braids they don't need it at all it's not beneficial to them if anything it's the opposite of a protective style for them but she swears that she doesn't care and she's going to do it anyways but in saying all of that she starts off the whole thing with to all the black females that are saying my hair ain't meant for box braids so she specifically references and addresses black females doesn't call them black women even she calls them black females so you can tell who she wants to outrage the most and who she's targeting in the actions that she's doing and later on she talks about I completely agree that it would be out of line and culture appropriation if I was trashing black girls or wearing braids than getting them, but that's not the situation at all. So leave me the fuck alone or I'm gonna start getting real disrespectful. Now she says all of that and then gets disrespectful. She says, I love the way I look, plus your mind agrees, and we all know I look fine as with any hairstyle I do from any culture because I'm just that. I hope you're bold headed stay up all night thinking about this me and my boy's gonna sleep for good good night now <laughs> there's a lot to unpack here i want to start off with her saying i love the way i look plus your man agrees this is her showing that she wants to be compared to black women because when she's saying your man she's suggesting that someone who would like you or would be with you would also be with me because i look like you secondly she's saying i look fine any hairstyle i do from any culture so she recognizes that box braids are from black culture she sh literally just said it so she is cultural appropriating whether she chooses to admit it or not she has implicitly admitted it here then she says i hope you're bored stay up all night thinking about this 
So she refers to black women because she starts with this whole dress to black women as bold headed that's been one of the stereotypes that you know has gone on for years people say oh what's under your wig are you bold under there your hair probably looks mad short etc and if your hair is short or you're bold then so what but that's been a stereotype and the fact that she says it she says it out of spite it's meant to be an insult okay and she's a whole you know kissy face and hearts emojis afterwards so in doing and saying all of this Bad Baby doesn't mince her words. She knows who she wants to get angry and she makes clear who she wants to get angry. She knows what she's doing is wrong because she admits what she's doing is wrong. But she doesn't say it's wrong, but by saying it's from a different culture, you're admitting to cultural appropriation. And by saying your mind would agree with me, you're trying to compare yourself to black women and in turn trying to erase black women by trying to place yourself on a pedestal which is higher than them. Whew. And something else I want to refer to is when she talks about black women gluing whole wigs in the head that are Brazilian, Indian and Peruvian. She's also spoke about people getting blonde weaves before and tries to compare that to culture appropriation. And here's where you're wrong, Miss Brigoli. People who say this fail to realise that if you have straight hair or blonde hair or hair from any of those textures, you will never be as advantaged because of the hair you have. You will never have any raw issues caused by the hair you have. And Bad Baby knows this herself, in fact, in her recent Instagram live, she said, who wants to be black? Who wants to be black? I don't understand that. I really just can't comprehend it. And explained the reason for her acting gangster and urban hood for her growing up in the hood and kind of likened it to Tarzan being raised by gorillas, which, you know, again, I wouldn't put it past her. I don't think that it was an unintentional comparison it's not a comparison that i would have made for example i know people who grew up in quote unquote the hood and still don't speak like that so it's not something she can blame she uses like i said before african american vernacular english when she speaks and when black people do it like i said it's seen as speaking black it's seen as not speaking proper english it's looked down upon it's seen like you can't communicate properly i don't necessarily see it in that way but that's how people who often who aren't black see it as in more recent times that people have appropriated it as well and used it with stan lingo and things like that that's a topic for another day but the way in which she uses it i think she she definitely plays it up and some of you might think again why would she use it if she's trying to seem desirable and things like that the reason she uses it comes from the whole fascination with blackness and stereotypes of blackness and um, especially because the fascination of blackness whilst people i feel like are generally fascinated with anything black people do whether they choose to admit it or not is the fascination with stereotypes of blackness and caricatures of blackness and one of the stereotypes like i said is the angry sassy loud ghetto black woman and the traits i've just expressed are the traits in which she tries to use because she wants people to be fascinated with her she wants people to watch her she wants to stay relevant and in order to stay relevant you need to have that fascination and this links back to eroticism and the way in which black bodies have been sexualized and black people have been sexualized not only in a like i said sexual way but also the fascination of black bodies and black people and black culture people love to look at black culture and to comment on it and to critique it and using the example of the whole black women stereotype when black women don't fit that mold people try to kind of bring it out of them and say oh you know yes queen you know snap their fingers and things like that and say oh why don't you act that way or if they do act their way they're kind of brought down for it or sometimes they're wrongly accused of acting that way when they don't act that way whereas with people like bad baby and white women it's seen as funny it's seen as entertaining something to laugh about again the fascination is still there it's slightly different but it stems from the same idea and the same root of fascination the idea that this white woman is acting like a stereotypical black woman why is she acting that way what is she doing and kind of it's just it's interesting for them to see because it's different it isn't the way in which they normally act and it's a black characteristic so they're observing it in a new body and they want to kind of see what it means and they like i said find it entertaining they laughed at the catch me outside girl but if it was a black girl i'd say she's ratchet she's ghetto i mean she probably got a few she's ratchet she's ghetto bits as well but the fascination is definitely different in a white body and for me that links back to the function of desirability and exoticness 
being different, having that ambiguity about you, having that thing that makes you fascinating, that thing that's mysterious, that isn't so clear cut. That's what Bad Baby wants. She wants to stay relevant, so she would do anything to stay relevant. So she has to play on things that people find fascinating. And people find black culture fascinating. They find black people fascinating. Even day to day, you get a new hairstyle. Next thing you know, someone's touching your hair. Oh, I like your hair. Like, what is this? Like, just that just playing with it, tugging on you like you're a pet. Like, stop, don't touch my hair. But that even shows the fascination with black bodies. It's much different to the way in which white people are treated and white bodies are treated. I can't necessarily explain why, but I think it's just that the idea that they feel like subconsciously they have ownership and they have a right to black bodies. You may think I'm reaching here, but I genuinely think this is true. The idea that they feel like black bodies are inherently different to white bodies and therefore it fascinates them they want to know more about these differences they want to perhaps reinforce these differences and to make these differences areas of inferiority you let me know down below what you think about that i'd be interested to know have you studied more in this area like what what are your thoughts regarding that but i genuinely feel like the fascination is something that she sees in black people and something that she wants to try and bandwagon on using her brand and obviously she doesn't care if this is a negative way or in a positive way so she doesn't really care what she's doing but she knows that black outrage is something she can profit off and something she can make a bag off so it's something she uses because realistically like this week i found out she releases music i never knew she released music and it makes sense because her music isn't selling so she's got to come up with something real quick if she wants dinner on the table period but i've spoken about a lot of things in this video and my camera is flashing at me because it's about to die so i want to try and wrap up real quick and there's definitely a lot more i want to say and if there's anything that you feel like i missed out or anything you want to say please like i said comment it down below and if you like this video please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to me because it lets me know that you're enjoying this <laughs>